Hey, Bob Hughes of JD Squared here. And what we're going to talk a little bit in this video is what my daughter refers to as a thousand ways to die in plasma cutting. And what we're going to explain to you is situations that you can get yourself into where the quality of cut is just not what you were hoping for. Remember, my machine or our machine, the MAD, and everybody else's manufactured machine only has one purpose, and that's to put that torch where it's supposed to be within a pretty good resolution, in our case, under well under a thou, um, and at the right speed. That's all it knows how to do. It's just going to move this thing around, you know? So, when your cuts typically go bad, providing the machine is in good operating condition, it's almost always going to be the consumables are shot, you've got the wrong consumables, you don't have a ground on board. Um, we've, you know, we're seeing a lot of things happen out there that we didn't think we would see. And the funny thing is we've actually done a lot of these mistakes ourselves, so we're, we're learning pretty good. So let's talk about the machine condition, because let's say you're cutting and you, man, you know, I've got the right consumables and everything and it hasn't been going good, but I haven't taken a rag to the machine in five, six months. Um, the maintenance on this machine is, is virtually almost zil. If you're having an issue where the XY or, or the, the machine is not, you know, moving left or right fine, it could be that you built up debris on the hardened rails. So the maintenance on that is take a rag every once in a while, you know, I don't know, every month or a couple weeks, whatever you think, and just run a rag down it, you know. Make sure that we're not creating unnecessary friction between the rollers right there. I can't think of anything else to do maintenance on the machine. These things are really designed to just run and run and run and run. Um, that's pretty much all you would have to do right there. Maybe every once in a while, I've never done it. I've got a machine back there that's been running for 10 years. I don't think we've done it two times. Um, but you can run air through the gear track. But since our gears are set on the side, they typically tend to eject any debris anyway, and you'll never see a problem. Okay. Um, now, another thing, too, about maintenance on the machine is underneath here, if you've seen our other video, it's a pretty sophisticated mechanism with the, with the floating head, all the touch-off, the lead screw, and everything else like that. Every once in a while, and I don't know, every couple months, I mean, if you're using the machine a lot, if you're not using it much, you know, every, one, you know, every six months, take off the four bolts, remove the cover, and, and even though there's, there's a guard underneath here trying to keep stuff from getting up in there, um, it's not a perfect guard. We can't perfectly seal it. We've got it as close as we can. But every once in a while, you might want to take that shield off and look in there and make sure everything is, is good to go. You know, basically, there's no debris has got up on a lead screw. If there is, it's stupid easy to clean it. Just take a, you know, little, these little guitar, I mean these cigar cleaners and, and wipe it out. And you should be up and, up and running. The bearings and everything that we're running up here in the lead screws are non, uh, they don't need to be lubricated. So you don't, you don't even have to worry about any of that issue. All right, let's go on to some of the most, the, the most common problem um, that people seem to be having. In fact, actually, let's bypass that one first. Let's go on to a common problem that people have. And one of them is, um, and, I'm, and I've been guilty of this myself, you just forget to put the ground on there, you know? Now, what we suggest people do with our machines, because remember, we designed this machine to be high frequency resistant to the nth degree, the best we could do, you know? Which means we want everything on this machine tied to a common ground. So one thing you can do to help your quality right away is use our suggestion of having your ground cable here not hooked to your plasma. You want the ground cable to run around and hook to the copper grounding bars um, by the controller down there. Then on your plasma unit, you're gonna run another cable that is gonna run up and it's gonna tie to that copper ground unit. Now, another suggestion that um, the, the plasma manufacturer suggests, and we do too, it's highly suggested, is going down to Home Depot, Lowe's, or somebody, and buy one of these copper grounding rods that you see for your houses. I think they're like six feet long or so. All you gotta do is drill a hole in your floor and you might you actually want the hole a little bit oversized and I'll tell you why here in a little while. And then drive that copper rod into the ground and run a cable. I, I think you only need like a 10 gauge. I don't think it has to be too bad. Run a cable from that or heaviest cables you can get your hands on to our copper grounding bar. And what that's gonna do is it's going to allow everything to go to ground. So why did I tell you to drill the hole oversized? Believe it or not, you want 
to put water in that hole every once in a while. You actually want moist ground. Another thing you can pour in there, not a, not a crazy amount, but a little bit, is salt. Put a little salt in it because salt water conducts electricity a little better. And the deal is we're trying to give the machine and the plasma unit the absolute best way to get to ground. You know. Now, let's say um, we, we actually had one support call. Um, gentleman was real nice. He was new to plasma, so it's expected. And the machine's cutting just terrible you know and what was the problem and they go they, they finally say um if you got the ground on there and the response was what ground you know he'd been out there cutting with our machine with no ground you know and it was actually cutting that's that's remarkable it was actually cutting but the quality was garbage you know as soon as he hooked up the ground he was happy happy so another thing about the ground is you know our machine can cut painted surfaces because we have a floating head we don't rely only on omic if you are cutting metal that has been painted, don't forget that where the ground is hooked to the metal, you have to grind away. That that thing has to be on the base metal. It can't. You just can't clamp it to the paint. It's going to have the same problem the ohmic connection has. <laughs> There's no electrical connectivity. So make sure you do that. All right. Real quick. Um, let's talk about the floating head design and why it's on our machine. Um, once again, you guys know what the floating head is, and it's the bottom line is if you can't pick up an ohmic connection on the sheet metal, whether it's um, painted or whatever, well, our machine will use the floating head to hit trigger a limit switch, and now it knows where, where it's at, and off you go. You're cutting, right? Well, whenever the machine goes to do a, a touch off, it's going to touch off the metal, it's going to come up to pierce height, fire off the torch. Torch height control is going to take, is going to, I mean, it's going to drop down to cut height, then torch height control is going to take over, right? So we need to know that, that height pretty good, right? Um, well, if you're cutting on a water table like this here, for instance, and I'll, and I'll show you something here. Let's just go back right where we're at, and let's just turn the torch on and off. All right, you see what's happening. We're bubbling water all over the place. Well, it's going to take a second. Hypertherm has a certain delay built into their gas. Hurry up, hurry up. Okay. Well, we'll keep talking. You see it splashing away. Well, since we've been cutting with the plasma, you know that there's metal. There's metal dust. I mean, we vaporize this metal, so it's now in our, in our water. You know? Well, the water has splashed up on top of this. So here comes the plasma unit, and it's cruising on down, looking for its ohmic connection, and it contacts the top of the water bubble, you know, up there. Well, since we put metal in it, it's highly probable that it's, it's much more conductive than it was before. So what happens? The machine thinks it has found the metal, you know, because we've got that electrical connection, when in reality it has not found the metal, it's above it. Now, this isn't a huge deal, except for at the beginning of the cut, because she's gonna fire off at a higher number. It thinks it pierce height is 100 150 in the case of the consumables we have so if it touched off that bubble and that bubble was I don't know let's just say a tenth of an inch make an easy number this bad boy is going to fire off at a quarter of an inch what that's going to do is create a larger hole right there I mean that's providing it fires off at all you know cuts the hole but most likely it will so you've got a larger hole then you start cutting and as soon as you starts cutting torch height control takes over the air gas has blown the water away and you're cutting great but you can't figure out why you're getting this gouge it very well could be that now, on the machine, we have the ability to lock out torch height. I mean, we have the ability to um, lock out ohmic t sensing to where we don't sense. We all the time touch off of the floating head. And that would be a case if you were like, like this right here. We got water splashing around. We got everything going on. And that may be a case where you may want to do that. Most of the time, the air blast coming out of the torch is going to clear it, except for on the first torch, you know? All right. So let's talk about now, um, if you get false readings, by the way, if, if the torch, um, like it thinks the machine is on the metal, what could happen, and this happens with water, is that the water gets up in the nozzle and it shorts it out and the machine thinks it's on the metal even though it's it's not even in the metal you know so what you're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that's closed right with that that's pretty clean right there you don't you don't want the water getting up in there you know all right now let's talk about the number one problem with um crappy cuts and it has to do with the wrong consumables like we have the wrong group in it we're trying to cut um 16 gauge for instance with 85 amp consumables which come with the power max 85 um, 
it's just going to cut terrible because you're literally trying to hang a picture with a five pound sledgehammer. You need to get the low, the smaller consumables that are have less amperage so they're not putting out the heat and everything to cut the thinner metal. So the number one rule of thumb is make sure you've got the right consumables in the machine. Um, once again, version two of our and on of our software will tell you the correct part numbers. It'll even keep track of where it's at. So that should not be a problem. The other problem could be that, oh, I got the right consumables in it, but I forgot to set the plasma at the correct amperage. Once again, our program is telling you the amperage. So if you come up with a crappy cut, just go through a checklist real quick in your mind. Look, make sure the consumables are correct for the job you're doing. Make sure they match what the CAM program put out, what it thinks, because if they don't, your curve, your size, your parts could be wrong, etc. Um, and, and, and do the and make sure the nozzle is clean. At that point, you should be pretty good. Now, another possibility where you would have troubles is, let's say you're cutting aluminum. If we take these consumables and we start cutting aluminum, it's probably going to be just a. a like my granddaughter refers to it as a disaster piece, you know, it's not going to be good at all. And the reason is, is you're really going to have to use an inner gas nitrogen or something. Aluminum doesn't like to be air cut. It's as simple as that. On our lasers, we go through a ton of nitrogen cutting stainless steel lasers. So you've got to make sure you match the correct gas to the material and to the consumables. If you do all of that, and you pretty much go by the guidelines of the settings at all, you, this, these things are pretty much turnkey. They're going to do the job every time. They're going to do it right. Um, our machines are designed to run 24-7, where there's, you know, there's no duty cycle involved. Just run, run, run. But once again, it's the only job is to put that torch where it's supposed to be. So anyway, I hope this has helped you out a, a little bit right here. Um, Oh, one more thing I could think of real quick, and, and this is more of a safety factor. Hypertherm, it does not like, for instance, cutting aluminum on a water table. You know, having said that, 9 out of 10 machines going out the door are water tables. They're not a big fan of it. So what they recommend, and the reason is, is when you're cutting aluminum, you build up hydrogen underneath the plate. And next thing you know, you got this little mini explosion. Boom, up comes your plate. What the heck, you know? And it's because you've generated hydrogen. And if you guys remember the, the um, Hindenburg, this is not a good deal, you know? So what hypertherm has basically said is, is do not run the the water level very close to your your plate. You may want to drop it an inch, you know, half an inch or an inch or so. Um, that's just a recommended, you know, there. If you think you're going to do a lot of, of of aluminum cutting, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm going to go an air table all day long. You know, I'm going to stay away from the from the water table on that. But a lot of times the water table is the way to go. They're you know pretty clean in a small environment, etc. So just keep just keep in mind on that that you really don't want to build yourself a little bomb in your table, so keep the water label level a little bit low. Um, that's really all I can think of at this point that you know literally covers almost every call we've had on people having problems. I hope this has helped you. If you've thought of something I haven't thought of or if you just plain know something that I don't know, uh, please give us a call. We, we, our ears are always open for, for suggestions. Hey, thanks a bunch and you know happy cutting out there.